Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning worship for January the 17th. I was sad to learn the knowledge of the death of Anne Quirk, a faithful church member, a friend of many of us. Alan Quirk has asked me to pass on his thanks for the words of condolence and comforting words and cards that people have sent him. So we do keep Alan and indeed the family in mind. We also keep Carol Martin's family in mind as Carol lost her mother Joyce this week. Our God is a God who is the Good Shepherd that comforts us, that is loving, that is caring. Let's say together our opening words. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. We're now going to sing our opening hymn which is Heart of Worship as we come back and worship our Lord. simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required Search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart service that we recorded for this Sunday got corrupted and erased from the memory. 
but these things happen and we mustn't let it put us off. So let's focus on our readings. So the first reading we have comes from Ephesians chapter 4 and I'm going to read verses 1 to 6. I therefore, a prisoner in the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of your calling, which you have been called with all humility and gentleness and patience, bear with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as we are all called to one hope that belongs to you or your call, the Lord's one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing a couple of songs now. We're going to sing This Little Light of Mine and My Light's House. Peace in my 
against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and renew us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second reading comes from John chapter 1 verses 43 to 51. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said this to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's say a prayer together. As the boy Samuel said, Speak, Lord, for my servant is listening. Lord, we pray that you will speak to us and give us ears to hear your word. In Christ's name. Amen. Minded his own business, he was just minding his own business, sitting under the fig tree, trying to find some shade. That was, that's exactly what Nathaniel was doing just before his friend Philip came and turned his world upside down. Minding his own business. That's what we often find ourselves doing when Christ comes along and speaks into our own very lives. When God calls us, it's an invitation to follow. And it's not just Philip and Nathaniel. If we look earlier on in John 1, we see the same kind of thing with Andrew and Peter. 
And we see in Matthew's Gospel when Jesus called James and John, come, follow me. Calling is an invitation to follow. How often do we use the word calling in some kind of super spiritual sense? Maybe you've got the picture in your mind of Moses standing before the burning bush. Or maybe we might think, well, yes, that's a real calling. That's what a calling is supposed to look like. And we expect a clap of thunder or a lightning or some heavenly vision from the throne room of God like Isaiah the prophet had. Most times, when God calls, it's more a softer tone than Moses experience or Isaiah experience. It could be argued they were the exception to the norm. In terms of becoming disciples of Jesus, God calls us in an invitation to follow him. Jesus simply said to Philip, follow me. Philip went to his good friend Nathaniel and said, come and see. The tone is friendly, it's conversational. It's an invitation to follow Jesus. The invitation to follow is the call to discipleship. But it's also an invitation to discovery and adventure and exploration. In a nutshell, the invitation is an invitation to relationship. Well, yes, there may be a more vocational component to God's call in your life. He might be calling you to something specific, like being a missionary or a teacher or a nurse or a host of a number of things. But the specifics are not the heart of what God is all about. The heartbeat of God's call on our lives is an invitation to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. But in order to follow, we must leave. When Jesus invited Philip to follow him, he had to leave. He left the place where he was. He left the position he stood. He left the comforts and the familiarity of home in order to follow the Lord Jesus. In order for Nathaniel to follow, he had to leave. He left the shade of the fig tree. He left his reputation of being a highly respected citizen. He left the comforts and familiarity of home in order to follow Jesus. And thinking of James and John, Peter and Andrew, in order for each one to follow them, they had to respond to Jesus' invitation to follow. Each one had to leave. James and John left their father's fishing boats. Andrew and Peter left their nets on the shore. The point is, each one of them left the comforts and familiarity of home in order to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when a sermon starts using language like leaving the comforts, our imaginations can jump to anxiety and possibly even fear can work its way in. But instead of focusing on the things we leave, why not focus on the things that we gain? They gained a greater understanding, a greater relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. They found forgiveness and acceptance and a place in God's plan for the world. And through these believers, the world changed. Through these disciples, hearts were saved. Through these followers, men and women, boys and girls, came to discover the life-changing reality of God's redeeming love. Look at what they gained. It said that Nathaniel took the message of Jesus Christ all the way to India and Armenia. Philip was instrumental in taking the gospel to North Africa. And we could go down the list of the disciples and say how they worked to share the gospel. How these disciples gave up so much. And how the believers had to leave so much in order to follow the Lord's call for them. But that was the call for them. And your call will be different, but you have to respond to God's call. You see, God doesn't intend everyone to go to a different culture or to speak to a different language. God doesn't plan for every single one of us to become a preacher or Bible scholar. He does call each one of us to follow him. I'm often struck when I read the Gospel accounts how Jesus called the first disciples. 
I'm struck by how non-specific he is. He doesn't tell disciples that all that they will face. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe they could handle to know everything all at once. And maybe we'd be scared or awestruck with our faith if we heard everything. We could become par paralysed by the news. But then again, maybe the point of following Jesus is not all the hardship. And yes, if we're totally honest, there will be tough times. And maybe the point of following Jesus is not all the things that we have to give up, although there are things that, yes, we simply have to give up because they get in the way of us faith faithfully following the Lord Jesus Christ. But maybe the point of following Jesus is simply to leave the old way of life and find a new way of life in him. I read some words from Ephesians 4. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle, patient, bear with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. The first thing that following Jesus, i.e. the calling, we have received is the first thing. It means leaving the old way, letting go of pride, aggression for example, letting go of impatience and this generosity, leaving attitudes of hate, prejudice and vengefulness, setting aside division and self-centeredness. When we talk about the fact that we must do some leaving in order to do some following, these are the things that all followers of Jesus must leave in the old way of life. These things are all far too familiar. They're too comfortable like an old faded thread pair of slippers. They just seem to fit so well. And maybe we spend so much of our lives living in these old threadbare slippers that it seems so homely and comfortable. Pride, impatience are just a second nature. Self-centeredness is a familiar to their territory. But these things are not in harmony with what it means to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. In order to follow Jesus, we need to leave some of the old familiar territory and comforts. The point of following Jesus is leaving the old way of life in order to find a new life in him. And so it's about changing our heart and mind. It's about being transformed from inside out. It's about letting go and letting the life of Christ reshape us and remould us so that others can see that we belong to Jesus and yes that we are children of the Heavenly Father and yes that we are people rescued from a futile and fruitless life and we are people that have been given a promise bigger than this world can imagine or hope to attain. Peter and Andrew, Philip and Nathaniel and the other disciples left family and home and occupations. It seems to be part of discipleship is about letting go. First and foremost, the point of following Jesus is stepping away from the old way of life and pursuing a new life in Christ Jesus. That's the point. That's what's at the heart of the core of God, letting go of the old life and grabbing hold of new life in Jesus Christ, that new life that Jesus has for us. And Jesus is the centre and the source of our calling. Which brings us back to my last point I want to say. That Jesus is the centre and the source of our calling. He's the focal point. He's the voice we are to listen to. He are the footsteps that we are to follow. He is the one we are to pursue. When we're talking about the call of God on our lives, and what it means to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, so much about of it's about imitation. Following Jesus in the acts of imitating his character, his way, his heart. There are times when it feels awkward and it's hard to keep in step with the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you look at the Gospel accounts, it's painfully apparent how often the disciples miss the boat. They followed Jesus by physically leaving their homes and families, but they were still holding on to some old ways, some old ideas and some old sins. And the same thing can happen with us. To follow Jesus is to embark on a journey, an adventure, a discovery, not just discovering more about Jesus, but also discovering more about our very selves. What's buried deep within our hearts? What kind of things we're holding on to 
as if they're more important than God himself. What kind of values we have that don't fit in with the values of the kingdom of God. The invitation to follow Jesus is an invitation of a journey of discovery. Discovery of the awesome heart of God. Discovering wonderful plans for God. Discovering who we are and what we made us, what we're made of. But this journey of discovery can only happen if we remember that Jesus is the centre and the source of it all. Here's the focal point, the footsteps and the one we are following. Here's the one we pursue. Jesus invites us to follow him afresh. It is Jesus that we are to follow. And for goodness sake, don't make a big point of following other people. We follow the Lord Jesus. Yes, we can learn from saints like St Francis of Sisi or St Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta and how they follow Christ in the light of their tradition. But we follow the Lord Jesus Christ and we are called to follow him. And Jesus beckons us. Jesus says, come follow me. It's a beautiful invitation, but nonetheless, it's an invitation that each one of us must respond to. I rather felt the tone of the calling was friendly and conversational. It's an invitation for us to follow Jesus. So I don't want to get too heavy. And maybe it's just because intuitively we can see that that word calling, well, we just know deep down in our gut that calling is not just another word. And even though we may not know all the specifics, somehow we know that God's call on our lives today. And God calls us to follow him afresh. Look, there's no getting around that. But we shouldn't scare, shouldn't scare us or paralyse us with fear. We must not leave us sitting on the side of the road because we can't bring ourselves to take the first steps to follow Jesus. All of us are travelling down some road. One thing life has taught me is that all roads have difficulties and tragedies. All roads make demands and require sacrifices and surrender. And no matter what road you go down, there will be leaving. And no matter what road you travel on, you will have things or people that you have to focus on. The calling of Jesus is to follow Jesus. It's simply an invitation to focus on Christ. Christ is our centre. And really, who or what more better can we follow than the Lord Jesus Christ? Being a disciple is an adventure if we follow the Lord Jesus faithfully as we enter into 2021. It's a good time to commit ourselves afresh to follow the Lord Jesus and be prepared to leave behind those ways, those habits, those behaviours that are not in keeping or fitting with how the Lord would have us behave. It won't be easy if we rely on our own strength and we will fall short. We need to ask the Holy Spirit for help. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and inspire us. And we need each other too, to encourage each other. Nathaniel was not impressed with the idea of meeting the Messiah and offered a rather contemptuous reply. Can you think good come from Nazareth? He was thinking it's highly unlikely that God could make it work. And perhaps he was thinking it's highly unlikely that God would ever want to work here in a place. Maybe he's limiting God and limiting God working in his life. But then Nathaniel met the Lord Jesus and discovers that he has no limits. Jesus even saw him as he was sitting under the fig tree. Nathaniel concluded and declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And even though Jesus had met Nathaniel, Jesus knew all about him. He knew Nathaniel was not hypocritical like many of the Jewish leaders, but he was a sincere man. Nathaniel is generally being accepted to be the same person as Bartholomew, one of the twelve disciples. They say that Bartholomew was his second name, Nathaniel. The Lord knew about Nathaniel. He knew, knows all about you. Always clear to him, the Lord Jesus, he knows is all about us. Let's come to him afresh and talk to him about it in prayer. Talk to him and let's be resolved to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity and faith. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, 
Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We're now going to sing Jesus Be the Centre. intercession let us pray to god who knows us better than we know ourselves and understands our world lord we are called to be the body of christ make us worthy of that calling fervent in all our prayers and worship loving faithful and honest in our lives that the whole church displays what you are like lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for our leaders for Boris Johnson, Prime Minister, and indeed all of the parliaments. We also pray at this time for the American politicians. With all that's happened there, we pray for peace. 
May they all pursue that which is right and good and just. May there be good, upright moral values and standards. We pray for integrity. And Lord, as they make important decisions, particularly regarding COVID-19, we pray for wisdom and understanding. And may they know your leading. We thank you for those that advise them. We pray that they may know the leading of your Holy Spirit too. Lord, we thank you for their love of science. And we pray that they can use their love for people and science together to serve the common good. Lord, we thank you for our homes. We thank you for our church. And we pray for all those who struggle and those that are finding it difficult at this time. May each of our households be blessed as we pray. And may they be filled with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those that are ill with COVID, that they will soon recover. We pray for those that are treating them, that they may know strength. As many staff are very tired, we pray that they won't lose compassion, but may they know strengthening from on high. And we pray for those that have recently been bereaved. We particularly think of Alan Quirk and Richard and Alison and Sarah. And we also think of Carol Martin, who's lost her mother. So we pray for her family too. Well, may they know your loving arms surrounding them. Grant them peace, rest, and may they know your consolation, care and comfort. And help us to share your comfort too. We do pray for all those who are sick. Lord Jesus, we read in the Bible how they brought the sick to you and you touched them and they were healed. And so, Lord, we bring to you those that we care for and are concerned. We pray that they may know your healing touch. We thank you that the vaccines for COVID-19 are being shared out now. We thank you for the COVID-19 vaccination programmes offering protection to healthcare workers, elderly and others in need. Lord, we thank you for all the work that's gone in to prepare these vaccines. We pray that logistics of getting these vaccines out would go well. And we thank you for all those that work on those projects. Lord, may we know your Holy Spirit strengthening us and giving us grace as we pursue our calling. And the special prayer for this Sunday. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known the heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name my hope is built on nothing less Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name Christ alone, cornerstone strong in the Savior's love through the storm He is Lord Lord of
trumpet sound Oh may I then in Him be found Dressed in His righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne Normally at this part of the service we'd have the offertory, we can't do that. But we'll put up the QR code, please use it, it makes a big difference, even if you can give a small amount. The Lord bless you. 